Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take another look at the prisons campaign. We're going to go back to the debate when Lord Blencathra moved his amendment 97ZA. And we're going to look at another contribution. This one is from Lord Barclay of Knighton. He's a, a crossbencher and he, he disagreed with Lord Blencathra's Amendment 97ZA. So let's take a look at his speech. Um, I wonder if I might just amplify somewhat more bluntly the points made by my two noble learned friends and indeed Lord Fawkes and Lord Cashman. Um, I, I simply have been to prison um, as a member of the Kersler Trust trying to take arts in there. And one of the things that struck me was, and in a way the arts was a release for this, was the sort of fevered testosterone that exists. We've heard about it from both sides. Now, I ask you to imagine just for one moment, what would happen to somebody who was incarcerated in a male prison already appears, shall we use this word, effeminate, but maybe even more, has been sexually adapted to being a woman. I cannot even begin to think how that person would be targeted in a male prison. And I really think we need to think very carefully about that, whatever the merits of Lord Brenkamp's amendment. So the first thing that jumped out at me was that Lord Barclay said that uh, effeminate men don't belong in men's prisons. Well, what, what, what are you going to do with feminine men then? <laughs> All men should be safe in men's prisons. So the fact that there are violent men in some men's prisons, in Category A prisons in particular, um, doesn't mean that effeminate men can't be safe within prisons. There are vulnerable prisoner units, there are different um, types of prison for different types of, of prisoners. It is not it is not okay to say that someone's mannerisms or choice of dress means that they go to a woman's prison. Effeminate men are men. How dare you try and throw them out of the category men and into the category of women? No, we're not having that. So um, a short intervention um, and so I did a bit of looking around. What else can we find out about Lord Barclay? Now, uh, he is a believer that we should euthanise old and sick and disabled humans. Um, so if you were to look up his statements on the assisted dying bill, you would see that uh, he doesn't really understand the objections or he doesn't agree with the objections that disabled people have repeatedly made about this issue. I, I, I do not agree. Um, the other thing that jumped out to me was that um, in terms of domestic violence, he recommended a, a whole family approach. Um, now, the problem with this is that you cannot you cannot use a whole family approach when you have an abuser in the family because um, an abuser is a very, very skilled manipulator and they will manipulate a therapist or, or whoever's working with a family in order to perpetrate further abuse. So he's talking about the idea of um, using this whole family ap approach and then enabling them to rebuild a relationship when actually the, the safe thing for women and children in a relationship with a perpetrator of domestic violence is to be supported to leave that relationship. Um, a perpetrator very, very rarely changes and only with, with a very, very deep personal commitment, which they, they need to deal with outside of that relationship. But um, on the flip side, Lord Barclay has written questions to support the rights of women that face um, culture of uh, female genital mutilation uh, to access justice. So thank you for the questions that you raised in 2014-2021. So that's a little summary about Lord Barclay. He's going to pop up in another video that I'm going to do about the Keep Ward single sex campaign, so look out for that. You could write to Lord Barclay. I don't think he's, uh, you know, a wedded um, LGBT ideologue. Um, 
I think you know he he has has not had correct information about um the risks that women face and that <sighs> you might find that if you were to have a dialogue with this man you might you might get to shift his opinion I don't know that's up to you to decide obviously if you do make contact with him I've got a guide of how to write to your MP or Lords. Uh, you'll find a description, um, a link in the description box that tells you how to address the Lords. Um, if you're going to get in contact, please remain civil and, um, you know, hopefully um, we get somewhere with the dialogue. We, we, we have to be able to persuade people, otherwise we're not going to be able to get the changes we need. Thanks for coming back to the channel today to watch the video. Really appreciate your support. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, share the love. Um, if you have a friend that might be interested in this subject. Uh, if you want to um, support uh, Kate Coleman in the Keep Prison Single Sex uh, campaign, I really, I really do advise that um, supporting her crowdfunder is probably the number one thing that we can do. Uh, with this campaign. Second, second to that is to write to the various MPs and Lords. If you're prepared to do that, then that would be great. Uh, please, uh, if you would like to tip me for this work, feel free. I have got a PayPal, the link is in the description box. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.